Welcome to Public Domain Video Theater, presented by the great detectives of old-time radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Well, today we're bringing you an episode of Sheriff of Cochise. The original air date, February 22nd, 1957. This is Season 1, Episode 22, and the title is Triangle. That's tough. The doc. Even doctors aren't immune to heart attacks. This is going to hit everybody pretty hard. Doc Sheldon was one of the best liked men in Cochise County. He was a good man, all right. Somebody's got to tell his wife. Yeah, I know. Who? Want to come with me? Better find one of her neighbors, Harry. Sure, Frank. Hello, Sheriff. Hello, Mrs. Sheldon. Come in. Thank you. Doctor isn't in. I uh I know Mrs. Sheldon. Something wrong? I'm afraid so. Is is it the doctor? Has he been hurt? An accident? He's dead, Mrs. Sheldon. It must have been his heart. He was found by the side of the road. I, I know it's not much consolation now. The doctor will be mourned by every family in this county. You're not alone, Mrs. Sheldon. About the arrangements, Mrs. Sheldon. Would you like us to help? Would you please, Sheriff? I'd be so grateful. Will the Chester mortuary be all right with you? Begged him. I told him to slow down, take things easy, stop, stop trying to do so much. Try to lie down for a while, dear. Well, I guess we better be going, Terry. We'll make the arrangements, Mr. Sheldon, just as soon as the autopsy's finished. A chopsy. But you said it was his heart. Well, it's just a formality, Mrs. Sheldon. Whenever a person dies unattended. An autopsy is required. Oh, I see. Take good care of her, Mrs. Talbot. Whatever she wants or needs, you call us. 
That's right, Mr. Chester. Mrs. Sheldon asked me to make the arrangements. I'll have the body sent over as soon as I get the autopsy report. Thank you. Frank, uh, the boys and me thought we'd take up a little collection of flowers. Well, I think that's a good idea, Harry. Count me in. Oh, Mr. Harris called. He's going to get out a special edition of the paper tomorrow with the blackboard and all. Well, there's not much more I can do around here. I'm going over to see Dr. Greenwald. Well, hello, Doctor. Hello, Sheriff. I got the autopsy report. Uh, Thought you'd want to see it right away. Why? Dr. Sheldon didn't die of a heart attack. Well, what did he die? Strychnine poisoning. It's dead. The doctor taking poison by mistake? Impossible. He was murdered. Somebody gave him that poison. He didn't take it himself. Well, I had the front page all made up for tomorrow. I'll change it. Find Doc Sheldon's killer. I'd like to add one thing to that. Help find Doc Sheldon's killer. Well, you know, anybody in the county will do everything they can to help. And they can start off by coming to me with any information they have about the doctor. Doc Bishop tells me that strychnine works fast. It usually takes around 30 minutes. Now, the doctor's time of death was placed at around 11 o'clock. I'd like to know where he was at 10.30 and who he was with. I'll put it in a special box right on the front page. Thanks, Mr. Harris. Oh, I thank me. Doc Sheldon saved my wife's life. You say he left your place around 10 o'clock. That's right. Are you sure of it? Ought to be. The doctor told me what time it was himself. Said, my, 10 o'clock. I best be getting along. Hmm. He didn't happen to mention where he was going from your place. No, sir. Uh, well, thanks very much, Mrs. Hanson. And thank all of you for coming in. I'll notify you if there are any other questions. Well, here's what we got, Harry. Mrs. Talbot says she heard the doctor drive away from his home around 9 o'clock. Called on Mrs. Lawson at 9.20. Joe Turner at 9.35. Mrs. Hanford at 10 at 10. Left there around 10 o'clock. That leaves a whole hour unaccounted for. Yeah. Let's see... Mrs. Hanford lives around here. Doctor was found here. Between the hours of 10 and 11, he was somewhere in this area. A lot of ranches in that vicinity, Frank. I know it. We're going to check on every one of Saunders? That's right. I'm Sheriff Morgan. This is my deputy, Harry Olson. Hi. What can I do for you, Sheriff? Well, we were hoping you'd give us a little help. Uh, sure. Did Dr. Sheldon stop in here around 10.30 yesterday morning? Well, I haven't seen Dr. Sheldon. Let me see. Must be close to a month, maybe more. But you knew him. Oh, sure, I knew him. Who didn't? One of the first people I met when I came to town. You're sure he didn't stop by? Of course I'm sure. It's kind of funny. Uh, what is Oh, well, Peterson boy up the road said he saw him coming down this way around 10.15 yesterday morning. So? So I'm asking you if he stopped in. And I told you he didn't. Look, sure, if I read about it in the paper, if I'd known anything, I'd have been down to see you. He's a fine man, the doc. Everybody liked him. Well, somebody didn't. Frank, the kid could have been mistaken. Yeah, I guess so. Well, thanks anyway. Like I said, if I'd known anything, I'd have been down to see you. Didn't have to make a special trip all the way up here. I know we didn't have to. We wanted to. Thank you. Where's the next ranch? A couple of miles down the road. Or maybe he stopped there. Maybe he was never on this road. I don't know. The boys seem pretty certain about it. That he saw the doctor's insignia. Well, you know how kids are. Big imagination. Yeah, well, Maybe.
I can't figure it, Harry. There was no poison in his satchel. Where'd he get it? Who gave it to him? Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Is uh, Sheriff Morgan around? You have business with him? Well, I'm Joe Trimble. I run a bar over in Douglas. The paper said anybody can give any information about Doc Sheldon should see the sheriff. I'm the sheriff. Glad to meet you, Sheriff. I'm Joe Trimble. You have some information on Dr. Sheldon. Well, it's not about the doc, you understand. It's, a, it's about his wife. What about his wife? You know, that doc took care of my kid, and there isn't a thing in the world I wouldn't do to help find this killer. So when I saw this appeal in the news... What about his wife, Mr. Tremble? Well, she's been seeing a lot of a young fellow lately. They meet over in my place in Douglas. And to me, they seem to be more than just friends. You know this man? Well, I know his name. What is it? Saunders. Jack Saunders. <laughs> How are you feeling today, Mrs. Sheldon? Well, I... I thought I had myself pretty much under control until... I found out that Robert was... just doesn't seem possible. I know. That's what everyone says. The facts say different. Your husband was deliberately poisoned by someone. Who? Well, you know yourself, Sheriff, that Robert didn't have... An enemy in the world? I know. Mrs. Sheldon, how well do you know a man by the name of Jack Saunders? Who? Jack Saunders. He owns a ranch south of town. Oh, yes, Jack. I- I've met him a few times. Before. Where'd you meet him? In Douglas. Would you, uh, happen to know a man by the name of Joe Trimble? No, I don't think so. Your husband treated his little boy. He owns a bar in Douglas. Oh, I see. He owns the bar with and he told you that he'd seen Jack and me there. Had he? Of course. Well, then, Mr. Shellen, I'll have to ask you again. How well do you know Jack Saunders? Don't be ridiculous. I met Jack Saunders accidentally a few months ago in Douglas. His sister and I were friends before I married Dr. Sheldon. He told me that he planned on buying a ranch, and we used to meet occasionally and talk. Perhaps have a drink. That all? No, it most certainly is not all. I thoroughly resent your insinuations. Are you suggesting I'm that... trying to find out who murdered your husband, Mrs. Sheldon. He was seen on the road to Saunders Ranch 45 minutes before he was killed. Saunders claimed he didn't stop in. And he, uh, he didn't happen to mention he knew you. Well, you can understand that. He probably realizes how it might look. You reach wrong conclusions rather fast. Do I? I told you. Our meetings were purely casual. We were friends. My husband was a very busy man. He used to encourage me to go out once in a while. He knew that I'd had cocktails with Jack, and that once we went to a movie. There was no argument between you and the doctor that morning before he left. Certainly not. And he didn't complain about you at Saunders. I mean, threaten to go see him. No. And what you're inferring is purely supposition. All right, Mrs. Sheldon. Maybe I have jumped the gun. But I'd like to tell you something before I leave. If you're trying to protect Saunders, forget about it. I have told you the truth. All right. <laughs> Now, Mr. Landry. Oh, hello, hello Sheriff. Hello, Mr. Landry. What's the matter? Am I overdrawn at the bank? No, nothing like that. I just ran into a piece of information I thought you might like to have. Oh? Connection with what? Dr. Sheldon's murder. When I heard that he didn't die a natural death, I went through his files and accounts at our bank. I came across some interesting things. For example, during the past few months, Mrs. Sheldon has been systematically transferring his money and property into her name. Now, this is the ranch that he owned up Sandy Creek Way. Mrs. Sheldon owns it now. On June 9th, she drew $2,500 out of her account in cash. No law against that, is it? No, but the next day, June 10th, Jack Saunders made a $2,500 payment in cash on his place. Now, of course, it could be coincidence, but... Well, I just thought you should know about it. 
You're absolutely right. May I keep these papers? Sure, they're just copies of the originals. You keep it to yourself. Of course, our files and accounts are strictly confidential, but as you well know, Doc Sheldon was the best friend I've ever had. Thanks, Mr. Landry. Harry, get out of search warrant. What name? Jack Saunders. I want to know what you're looking for. Where'd you get that $2,500 in cash last year? I told you, I wanted it on the horses in Phoenix. Can you prove it? Can you prove I didn't? What do you think you're going to find? I don't know. Poison, maybe. What do you mean, poison? What time did Dr. Sheldon leave here Monday? Dr. Sheldon wasn't here Monday. I told you that. This is ridiculous. If you think I killed Dr. Sheldon, why don't you arrest him? You've got no evidence, mister, that's your trouble. Or you've got some other suspicion based on town gossip. Got more than that, Saunders. You better stick pretty close around. Don't get any ideas about leaving the county. Why would I leave? Just don't. Six five three eight. Hello. Grace, Morgan was here with a search warrant. Jack. Grace, don't hang up. He knows something, honey. I take it. Grace, don't hang up. Grace. Out of your mind? I couldn't help it, honey. I had to talk to you. Well, not here. What if someone saw you? Nobody saw me. I was careful. Morgan may come back here, or he may go to your place. He's already been over to my place. Grace, why'd you hang up on me? Because it isn't safe to talk on the phone. Well, that's why I came over, honey. It isn't safe to talk here either. Then meet me someplace, will you? I might be followed. No, you're smart enough to take care of that. You got me into this mess, and so help me if you don't get me out. Meet you at Stony Canyon. You better be there, Grace. You better have some good ideas. We're in trouble, honey, big trouble. I don't know what Morgan's found out, but he's tying us up in a neat little package, and I'm not going to swing for this alone. You're not going to swing for anything, Jack. You're just panicking. Morgan doesn't have anything on us except a lot of circumstantial evidence. Yeah. The important thing is to keep our nerve. You're a cool one. I don't know why I let you talk me into this in the first place. Don't you? Don't you? Gracie. Gracie, honey. That's better. Now, we'll meet. We'll get our story straight. Yeah. But you won't lose your nerve now, will you, Jack? No, no, Gracie. the sheriff's office.
Go get out, Jack. We can talk here. You're late. I've been waiting. No. doing here? Suppose you let me ask the questions. Why don't you leave me alone? Why don't you stop persecuting me? Where have you been, Mrs. Shellen? For a ride. Till daybreak? I couldn't sleep. I thought a little air might help. Where'd you ride to? I don't know. Toward Tucson, up in the hills someplace. Why? What difference does it make? I, uh, understand you had a visitor last night. Your friend, Jack Saunders. It was awful. That's why I couldn't sleep. He seemed to be out of his mind. He threatened to kill himself if I didn't go away with him. And you were more than just friends. No, we were not. He was in love with me, but I wouldn't have anything to do with him. At first, our meetings were casual, as I told you. He seemed very nice, good company. And then all of a sudden, he changed. After that, I refused to see him anymore. You gave him money to make a down payment on a ranch. Why? He said if I'd help him, he'd leave me alone. If I didn't, he threatened to kill Robert. Why didn't you tell me this before? He said if I opened my mouth, he'd implicate me. He'd say that we did it together. I've nearly been out of my mind. I didn't know what to do. Where is he now? I don't know. All right, we'll pick him up. You better come down to the office with me. I'm telling you the truth this time, Sheriff. You believe me, don't you? We'll see what Mr. Saunders has to say for himself. Don't believe anything he says, Sheriff. He'll say we were in it together, and it isn't true. It isn't true. Take it easy, Mrs. Sheldon. No jury ever sent a woman to gas chamber on circumstantial evidence. Or on the word of a killer. Morgan Olson. Morgan Olson. Come in, Harry. Go ahead. Any trace of Saunders yet? Not yet. The boys are out looking. Well, you better put out an all-points bulletin. He may have skipped the county. Right. I'm bringing Mrs. Sheldon in. She wants to make a statement. Okay. That is all. Mrs. Sheldon, you testify that you've given this statement freely and voluntarily and without threat or duress of any kind. I do. Have that transcribed right away, please. Could I have a glass of water, please? Surely. Sheriff's Office, Olson. Yeah? Where? Okay. Found Saunders, Stone Canyon. They found him, Mr. Sheldon. Jack? That's right. Don't believe anything he says, Sheriff. Please. You told me he'd kill himself if you didn't run away with him. Yes. I'd like you to come with me. All right. Who 
dies hard, huh, Gracie? Awful hard. I got one thing to thank you for, though. I'll get off easy. Because I won't make it. this scene with the bank president. If you have any background in financial services or maintaining confidentiality of information, that was a little painful to watch. Certainly what he did was unethical. And in the 21st century, it would be outright illegal. And the remark at the end about the information being confidential was hilarious. He went into a deceased customer's account history, and then went into another customer's history, and still another's, playing detective on his own. It's the sort of thing that should never happen. Sheriff's Department should have requested the records and reviewed them. A banker doing that on their own is all sorts of unethical. They should only be looking at that if they need to know it for their business. Though I think it's meant to portray the idea of how well loved the m murder victim was and how eager people are to cooperate. In addition, it's a persistent theme in a lot of Golden Age media is that there are some finer niceties and procedures, formalities that would always be practiced in larger cities, but that small towns might essentially wave and just kind of do things their own way. But of course, in the 21st century, when it comes to something like this, I don't think it matters what what size of town you're in. What this bank president did, this one is don't try this at home or at your hometown bank. The wife uh, was portrayed as a very cool and calculating customer, capable of telling bald-faced lies with a straight face to the sheriff, feigning outrage that he would even think that sweet, innocent her had anything to do with this, or was anything less than the picture of propriety, and sort of kissing her lover before setting up a meeting at which she intended to kill him. However, that doesn't make her a cunning murderess, particularly not the second murder. She fired five shots into her co-conspirator, then walked around to the other side of the car and put the gun in his hand. How did she think the investigation was going to go? Well, Sheriff, the way it looks to me, he shot himself five times from the other side of the car. At least that would explain why the trajectory of the bullets was off. I'm very dubious that this guy lived as long as he did. In fairness to her, and I think to the writers, this seems like her shooting from the other side of the car feels like it was something done to capture a shot and that they like the way that was framed. It's just when she tries to set it up as a suicide, it just looks silly. And that's my thought on this week's episode of Sheriff of Cochise. And now a programming announcement. As those who listen to my Great Detectives podcast know, my wife and I are expecting our first a child coming up very shortly. I've made plans and hopefully all of our audio 
uh, podcast are going to continue on with without interruption as I've recorded episodes ahead. But Public Domain Video Theater will be going on hiatus for new episodes. I hope to have a Video Theater resuming in May. If you are getting video theater through a podcast, we'll be sending out some encore episodes. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, our entire playlist of 110 videos is at your disposal to rewatch until we return. Your understanding is definitely appreciated in this. That will do it for today. Join us back here next time for another episode of Public Domain Video Theater. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. And if you like these videos, you can become one of our patrons at patreon.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.